Late last month, President Trump expanded his travel ban to six more countries, effective later this week. The new countries include Kyrgyzstan, Myanmar, and four African nations. One of those is the continent's largest economy and its most populous country, Nigeria. Officials justify the ban on the basis of national security concerns. As the Washington Post reported, they say that each country has gaps in its security protocols surrounding travel that expose the United States to terror threats. But that argument doesn't really make sense. As the Cato Institute found, no one born in Nigeria, Myanmar, Tanzania, or Eritrea, four of the countries, have been responsible for a single terror-related death on American soil between 1975 and 2017. And if the administration were really worried about lax security, it would ban all visas from these countries. But it's only targeting permanent immigrant visas, leaving temporary visas from those countries untouched, which suggests that something else is going on here. Today Last year, when Trump unveiled a new immigration plan, White House aides told the Washington Post that Trump wanted high-skilled, well-educated, English-speaking immigrants who could assimilate easily and give back to the country. That's an understandable wish list for any world leader. But if that's what Trump wants, he should know that Nigerian immigrants, who make up the largest group of sub-Saharan African immigrants in the United States as of 2017, check all those boxes. They are some of the most educated immigrants in America. According to the Migration Policy Institute, 59% of Nigerian immigrants aged 25 or older in the U.S. hold at least a bachelor's degree. That is nearly double the proportion for Americans born in the U.S. It is also more than the proportion for immigrants from South Korea, China, Britain, and Germany. And Nigerian immigrants tend to work high-skilled jobs. 54% of them are in largely white-collar positions in management, business, science, and the arts, compared to just 39% of people born in the U.S. That means, of course, they have significant spending power. According to a new report by the New American Economy Research Fund, in 2018, Nigerian immigrants in the United States made more than $14 billion and paid more than $4 billion in taxes. And the Nigerian diaspora around the world sent back almost $24 billion in remittances in 2018, contributing to a Nigerian economy that is more dynamic than many people, including maybe Trump himself, realize. Nigeria was once thought to be just an oil economy, but today services account for more than 50% of its GDP. Technology is now 10%, according to the Center for Global Development. A growing middle class is increasingly educated and aspirational. Nigeria is America's second largest African trading partner, and the U.S. wants to double existing trade and investment in Africa. As the former ambassador to Nigeria, John Campbell, notes, that goal taken alongside the ban amounts to, quote, policy incoherence, unquote. In terms of politics, however, it has an obvious dark logic. Trump has often made it plain he doesn't like immigrants from poor countries filled with brown and black people. As the New York Times reported in 2017, he complained to aides that Nigerian migrants would never go back to their huts. The next year, the Washington Post first reported that in a meeting with lawmakers, he said he wanted more immigrants from Norway and fewer from Haiti and African nations, or as he famously dubbed them, shithole countries. Throughout the 2016 campaign, drugs, Trump described Mexicans as drugs, criminals and Muslims as terrorists. The Nigeria travel ban reminds us, I suppose, that Donald John Trump is back on the campaign trail.